I'm Nayo Anya, your host and audio equity champion from the Yorkshire Sound Women Network. Today, we're focusing on a really important aspect of our Volume Up framework, working practices. Our working practices aren't just a set of rules or guidelines. They are the very foundation of our values as organisations and as professionals. They set the stage for what we believe in, how we want to manage our spaces, how we create environments that everyone can thrive in, and how we can think differently. In this episode, we'll hear from our four wonderful guests, starting with Laura from Saffron Records. I asked our guests who or what has helped you to succeed, because I think it's really important to think about where we get those first sparks that make us feel confident, that make us feel like we have a vision, and that just makes us feel like we could create a pathway for ourselves that each of these guests has done time and time again. My art teacher, because I think she was somebody that she just taught me to think so differently. She was the one that absolutely believed in me when nobody else did. <laughs> nobody else. <laughs> So she's going to be the, the like starting seed of, you know, getting me to believe in myself and my own ability. When it came to the kind of industry, so being in this industry, there were two platforms. So She Said So mm. and Bristol Women in Music. Mm. So Bristol Women in Music were 11 women in Bristol that were just working in various parts of the industry and they were oh uh, yeah they really like we were just really able to explore those spaces able to support one another um and that was really where you know saffron mixed nights was born out well mixed nights was born out of that saffron was running alongside it and then she said so which was then a global network and again, you know, we're able to ask those questions online, hear other people talking about those shared experiences and, you know, knowing the kind of safe spaces, the not so safe spaces. And I think that just supported me in that starting of Saffron. And yeah, and I, I would say, you know, like in terms of the success of Saffron, it's the team like that is the team 100% like it's a team where there is from the kind of directors right through to our freelance team our core team there is diversity there's diversity in thought there's it like it's the diverse thinking that really actually when you're in that space and you are able to hear and listen to other people and their different, you know, thoughts and thinking and experiences. It just, it makes such a creative platform, I think, for there to be this absolutely incredible, like, vision and mission and, you know, for everyone to be on that journey together. So I think, yes, yeah, in terms of the success now, it's the, it's the team. It is so important to have a team of people around you to feed off, to bounce ideas from, to make you feel like there's a, a direction that you don't need to go in on your own. Laura's point about diversity of thought is a perfect segue into what Isabel shared with us. She talked about how her mother, a special needs teacher, shaped her understanding of neurodivergence and how important it is to have working practices that accommodate everybody's needs. The first people I would have to mention is my parents. My mum was a special needs teacher the whole time, uh, the, her whole career. So growing up, I already had someone at home who really understood, you know, neurodivergence and how that impacts people's learning. And my dad as well has always worked in education and museums. So again, I had these two people who had really kind of like interesting nuanced understandings of what learning was where learning happens who who learns how and the and that it's a human right really that we can learn and all the different barriers that may be put in front of people so i think had i not had that growing up with dyslexia 
it would have been really different. I think after that, it would be just some of the incredible teachers that I've had, um, you know, music teachers, and then going up and doing, um, you know, a degree and then an MA, and then very luckily getting a scholarship to do a PhD as well. There's been people along the way who have gone above and beyond their, you know, their job title to inspire me and support me and champion me in ways that has, you know, really made an incredible amount of difference. Isabel's experience of having people around her who could celebrate the way that her mind works reminds us of the broader responsibilities we hold as professionals. The Jaguar Foundation reports that while shared parental leave is becoming more common, there's still a long way to go before caring responsibilities are shared equally. This imbalance contributes to the underrepresentation of parents and carers in the music industry, particularly women. Only 29.7% of the music industry identifies as parents or carers, compared to 44% of the UK working population. Which brings me to Zylo from Music Production for Women, who reflects on her grandmother's legacy and the responsibility we have to use the resources available to us. I have learned a lot from my family, especially if I think about two generations ago with my grandparents uh, and I think about the life that they lived and I just find it so hard to fathom how challenging that life was. They grew up in a one-room house. Everything was the one room and they just had to make it work. And my grandpa's mum was a single mum. Her husband died quite young and she had three kids to look after in a time where women didn't work. So she just had to kind of take up whatever odd jobs that she had and like give her kids to whoever, you know, neighbors or whatever to look after them and, and just bring them up. And they all got good government jobs. That was, you know, the best kind of job to get at the time. And, and she did that for them. And, and that's kind of flown through now three generations from that. And I can't help but think, wow, if they manage to live a happy life with the hardships that they had, then I have to work hard as well and and kind of make the most of uh, what whatever resources that I have. And I think I have so much more available to me than they uh, did. So that's for me a big motivator to keep going and to 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 yeah to not give up with um wherever things are at um so yeah so I would say my family is probably my biggest motivator and we love a strong matriarch you know we love someone who's actually going to be yeah. like hey we're going to have to make it work you know and I think it's a it's a phrase I think of often whenever I'm in a state of what am I doing and it's uh <laughs> it's you are your ancestors wildest dreams you know and that is always what I take with me because I is it, in a similar way it's like we have you know there's a lot going on in the world but we have a lot of resources and we have a lot of opportunity mm. and we are able to do so much for ourselves now in a way mm. that we were just not able to um so I love that I love that mm. I love that saying as well that's a good one Zylo's words remind us that the support we receive and give can be transformative. It's not just about individual efforts, it's about the collective. What's the collective vision? What's the collective work that's being done? Nali shares how different people have been pivotal in building her career. I think a lot of people have helped me, whether that's, you know, people from brands like the community managers and stuff um social media managers who have you know given me the chance to be able to work on certain things with them um you know people that have been organizing events that have then gone on to book me for things I think you know everyone that you meet along the way um who I guess believes in you and gives you a chance to kind of show your work and put yourself out there you know all of them 
every single one of those people, every single one of those companies and stuff has been um, a pivotal. Nali's experience highlights the importance of supportive working environments, but it also points to the challenges we still face. Discrimination isn't always something drastic. It can come in microaggressions, small actions and comments that reminds the marginalised that they are the other. That feeling of being an outsider can be detrimental, not only to people's sense of self-worth, but also their optimism for their future in an industry where there are few clear practices put in place to protect them. A recent report by the Musicians' Union found that 24% of LGBTQ plus musicians have experienced discrimination related to their sexuality whilst working. And 28% have witnessed such discrimination. On top of that, there have been alarming rates of sexual harassment and abuse, which still persist in our industry. With women, 34%, trans individuals, 42%, and non-binary individuals, 43%, reporting experiences of harassment or abuse at work, according to the Be The Change report from 2023. These statistics underscore the urgent need for working practices that ensure safety, fairness and respect for everyone in our industry. That's why this step in the Volume Up framework is so vital. If you're ready to take some action, we invite you to sign up to our Volume Up standard, focusing on working practices as strand number three. This step is about ensuring that all staff and contractors can work in environments that are fair and safe. One thing that you could do as a pledge is to implement policies on flexible working, late night working, and put in some support for lone workers. It's also crucial to establish a clear incidence policy with a strong focus on preventing and addressing sexual harassment. At YSWN, we've done extensive research through our WIRED project on best practices in the industry, and we're here to guide you with our volume up standard. We believe that by committing to these working practices, by pledging an action, you're not just ticking a box, you're not just having conversations, you're setting the standard for what our industry can and should be. This isn't just about compliance. It's about creating spaces where everyone, regardless of their background, gender or identity, can contribute and thrive. For further insights, please read the reports by Musicians Union and Be The Change. And of course, you can check out YSWN's Wired Project, which has a free toolkit that can be downloaded from our website. These resources will help you implement fair working practices. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope that this has given you a lot of things to think about and we'll see you next time on Turn Up The Volume where we'll be looking at the fourth strand of Volume Up, pay. Thank you to all our incredible guests, Laura from Saffron Records, Silo from Music Production for Women, Isabel from Girls Twiddling Knobs and Gnarly. Make sure to go and give them a follow on all their social medias and support the great work they do to continue pushing for gender equity. Thank you also to Rosa UK, a grant-making charity that funds women's and girls' organisations working to make the UK a fairer, safer place, without whom we wouldn't have been able to create this podcast. I'm Nayo Anya, your podcast host, scripter and director and audio equity champion at YSWN. Thank you to our editor, Joe Kennedy and Sarah Statham, who has provided the music, both of whom are YSWN associates. To find out more about what we do, head to our website, www.yorkshiresoundwomen.com. See you next time.